Hi, my name's Gwen and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So the video I did about uh, compression called Compression Parameters was really surprisingly popular. Uh, so I thought I'd do a couple of follow-up videos. So that first video covered using a compressor on like the output of your mix or maybe the output of a drum machine or something like that. But you can use a compressor to really shape your drum sounds if you put the compressor on just one sound only. So the things you can adjust um, in the attack phase of the drum is to make the attack transient louder or longer and shorter. And in terms of the back end of the drum sound, the, the tail if you like, uh, you can also make that shorter or longer. So I'm gonna do a drawing now to explain how that works and then we'll go to a compressor and we'll do a practical example of how all that will work. So I thought I'd do a drawing about how you can shape your drum sounds in a compressor. So I'll start by um, doing a drawing of, of a drum sound. Volume. And that's time. So quite often your drum sound will start with a um, a little peak at the start, and then it will tail off over time like that. Now what people often forget about compressors is they don't actually boost the volume of your audio, they actually reduce it. It's a gain reducer. But at the end of the compressor there is usually a gain stage or you can do it on your mixer where you can compensate for the fact that it reduces the gain. So in this case in the attack portion of the compressor it doesn't do anything at all to the audio. So that means in this part here, that's exactly the same. And that is your attack control. You can determine how long this attack transient is. Now at this point, the signal will start to drop as the compressor kicks in. Now, you can adjust how much um, it does drop by. So let's, let's say it does drop lower than the original signal. Now the height from the peak, if you like, to where it drops to is determined by the threshold. And the compression ratio. And the easiest way to adjust that is by I find is by using the, the threshold value because once you have a compression ratio of you know over about maybe three to one um, you you get more control over this with the, the threshold so with the attack you can determine the length of the initial transient um, with the threshold, you can determine how high it is. <clears throat> now we have the release phase of the compressor. So that will be exactly like it is here, but lower due to the compression ratio.
And at the end of the release time, the gain reduction will reduce. So your signal will start to ramp up again back to the original signal. And then that will tail across to the output. <clears throat> Now this is where it can get even more confusing. Now the signal mostly is a lot quieter than the original was. So you need to apply on the output some extra gain. And most compressors will have a control for that. Or you can do it on your mixer. So let's say we compensate um, for having the um, gain reduction. What will happen is, and I'm tracing the, the previous signal, is that you are a bit louder in the, your attack is louder than it was before. You may do the sustain phase, the same volume, um, you may set up the sustain phase to have the same volume um, by using your um, output gain. But then the release phase, something quite interesting happens. Because we've actually increased the gain, the release phase takes longer. So I'll show in red the, um, the gain reduced signal. something like that. So again I'll just annotate um, where the, the things are. So that's your determined basically by your threshold. The length of the attack transient is the attack time. And we have the release time, which takes us to there. So why is this interesting? Well, what's happened is you've uh, accentuated the, the attack transient at the start of your drum sound and your drum sound is now much longer than it was before. This is because you've increased the output gain so on the after the release phase when the signal goes back to what it was when it was uncompressed you've just boosted the gain of that so that has the effect of making this final phase of the drum longer than it was. But there is something else to note here. If you have a longer release time, that will actually shorten your drum sound. And I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, with a real compressor as a practical example. That will short, if you have a longer release time, that will shorten your drum sound because this phase here, the, in the release period of the compressor will be longer and the gain will be reduced, right? So that has the effect of making the drum sound shorter. 
Whereas if you have a lower release time, the release phase is shorter, so the compressor will open up its gain and allow the last part of the drum sound to be longer. Now the theory is all very well. Let's um, plug in a real compressor. So here is the practical example. I've got my Roland TR8 drum machine hooked up to this Clark Technic DN504 compressor. So this is a, a new purchase of mine, which I'm really pleased with. So it's basically four mono compressors all in one rack, but you can choose to pair compressors to into stereo if you want. So you could have two stereos or one stereo and two monos or all four monos. So let's talk about how we would shape the kick drum sound. I've rooted the kick drum into compressor two, which is here. Let's just hear the kick drum without any compression to begin with. There it is. Now, the first thing I would like to shape is the attack transient of the kick drum. So if you remember from the drawing section of this video, we can change the length of the attack and we can also make it more pronounced as well. And I'll show you how that's done. The first thing to do is to set a compression ratio and I'm going to go with my favorite of five to one. And then I'll adjust the threshold until the compressor kicks in. And I'll be able to see that here on this LED display. Now you can hear it's already having an effect. So the overall gain and volume of the sound is lower now, just as I said. So we'll need to boost that with the output gain. The other thing you can hear is that the very, very start still has a little click, which is the attack transient. You can never, ever quite get rid of it with a compressor like this. Hopefully you can hear that click at the start. I'll boost the volume. Yes, I do believe you can still hear that. So if I increase the attack control that will make the attack time longer so that uh, will make the the part of the sound at the start which is the attack and is the louder part of the sound it will make the, that period a bit longer So I think you could hear quite clearly there how the attack phase became shorter and longer. So there is always a sweet spot for these things. We just need to listen out for where we think that attack phase sounds the nicest. And I think it's probably around there. Now we can also adjust uh, how pronounced the attack is by varying the threshold. So that will, if you remember this um, diagram here, we've, we've just adjusted the attack time. So we can now adjust how much um, it will drop after the attack phase. Now the tricky thing is that by changing the threshold and, and making it increase, so making the attack less pronounced, it makes the sound louder. So we need to reduce the gain to compensate. So 
So that's with maximum threshold and you can hear that the, the attack phase is very pronounced. Let's drop it a bit. There at about two thirds, it's, um, it's much uh, less pronounced and we can do a bit more. Now you can see there, it's only got one dB of gain reduction. So the height here is, isn't very much, but on maximum, where we really hear that click, this, this, this height here is the, the most we can set. So clearly we want to send it, set it somewhere in the middle. Um, I'll have a play with it now and see if I can find a good sweet spot. I think it sounds quite nice there. Um, to, to demonstrate that I will kick in and out the compressor. So I think that um, has brought the attack of that 808 kick out very nicely indeed. So now let's talk about the release control. Now I said if you increase the release control, you will shorten the, the length of your drum. So let's just try that. I think that showed it quite nicely. Now, if you remember in the previous compression video, I said if it's the compressor is always active, in other words, if it never resets itself back to zero, then you're not making best use of your compressor. So that's at that point there where that one is always lit. Now at any point from that onwards um, isn't really going to affect um, the release of the drum sound very much, but you still have two thirds of the control to mess around with and, and tweak the length of the kick drum. make it nice and long. <coughs> so as I said, that is adjusting this release time here. So I'll do you a demo again with and without the compressor. It makes the attack more pronounced and it makes the sound longer as well. The other thing to note is this threshold control. So I did say that you should never set the release so that the compressor is always active and that goes for the threshold as well. At this point the, the sound was always compressed. And that just means that you're pointlessly reducing the game when you don't need to and you're not getting the best out of the compressor. So as another example, I'd like to use compressor three on the snare sound. <coughs> Let's just listen to the snare with, without any effect first. So it would be nice if that 808 snare was a bit longer and, and more aggressive. So we follow the same process. I'm going to kick in the compressor and start to uh, make adjustments. Now I want to be quite aggressive with the compression on the snare just because that's the sound I like. 
I'm still going to go with a five to one compression ratio. I wouldn't don't necessarily have to, but I find that's kind of the golden number, at least for me. And I'll start to increase the threshold. I'm going to set it to the, the highest I can, um, but still ensuring that um, we don't go into the state where it's always in compression. Probably somewhere there. Now, as I already said, by uh, changing that threshold, you actually make the sound quieter. So I'm going to compensate with some gain on the output. So that's with the compressor. And that's without. Now I've really squashed the sound of that snare, that's what I wanted. At the moment the length of the attack phase is at minimum. It would be nice to have some attack in the snare, so I'm going to tweak this attack control until it, it sounds as I'd, I'd like it to. probably somewhere there. And then the release um, will adjust the length of the snare. So as I've already said, as we increase the release time, we will reduce the length of the drum sound. somewhere there sounds quite good. I'll enable the kick drum and we can listen to them both together. And I'll just enable all the other sounds. Let's give them both the kick drum and the snare drum a lot more punch. The attack phase has been accentuated and then we've dialed in the length of the drum sounds to fit as we'd like it to in the mix. So that was a demonstration of how you can shape your drum sounds using a compressor. I hope you found that interesting and useful. It's quite surprising how much of a difference it actually does make and how easy it is Consider liking the video, that would be brilliant. And if you could subscribe too, that would really boost my motivation. I love it when there's an extra subscriber. It makes me very pleased and warm inside. Thanks a lot and stay tuned for the next video.